welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Brianna and today I want to share with you some of my favorite ways to consume kale salad. I know a lot of people have gotten on the kale bandwagon lately, but it's been around for a really long time. It's so incredibly healthy, but not a lot of people actually enjoy eating it. And I have gotten some of the most veggie averse people to actually say, hmm, this is pretty good. It's an updated version of my dad's favorite salad. He used to keep this in the fridge all the time when I was a kid. And with a few subtle shifts and tweaks to it, it can be incredibly helpful for not only boosting your internal health and well-being, but really boosting the external glow that you have. So I want to break down a couple different versions of this salad for you. It's very simple, it's very easy, and I'm sure that it'll be a great way to incorporate more kale into the diets of your life or those in your life that don't necessarily think that eating their greens is all that important. They may actually start enjoying them if you want to give this a try. So, let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, the main ingredient, of course, is kale. My preference is black kale. It's also known as lacinto kale or dinosaur kale. It's labeled differently in lots of different stores, but it's the flat, smooth type of kale that you'll see in the grocery store. It's still bumpy, but it's not that fluffy, crinkly kind of kale. If you get it from a farmer's market or you get the organic, know that sometimes the back side can have itty bitty little bugs on. So they'll look like little gray flecks and when you go to wash them you'll wonder what the heck is that? Um, I've learned over the years that it's very common when pesticides aren't used and so I will soak my kale in cool water for a little while to get all of those pesky little things off. But um, this kale isn't organic. I just picked it up at my closest grocer um, last night and there's no bugs. So if you see any, don't freak. Don't think you have to throw the whole batch away. Just soak the leaves and everything will rinse off and then give it a couple rinses and it'll be just fine. Then the next main ingredient are green onions. Green onions have compounds that are incredibly helpful for um, being antibacterial, antiviral. Um, they're really good for stimulating digestion and there's um, some sulfur in there which ends up being really, really great for the skin. Onions are really great for the skin. The flavor um, of the green onions really takes over. So if you have a very um, strong palate and you like lots of flavor like I do, you may incorporate an entire Bunch. I have three bunches of kale. I'm going to use an entire bunch of green onions. And um, if that's too much for you, just cut back. Maybe just use one or two and, and see how you like it. There's no real rules. Um, you can play with it and experiment with it as much as you like. The next main ingredient is avocado. Avocado is incredibly good for our skin. It's great for our digestion as well. Avocados contain a tremendous amount of essential fatty acids, good fats, fats that a lot of us don't get as much of as we should. A lot of times people eat bad fats, fried foods and yummy tasty treats like that, but those fats aren't necessarily great for our internal well-being and they certainly aren't good for our skin. But things like avocados, almonds, olives, coconuts, good fats, good fatty sources in whole plant form are amazing for giving our skin a truly healthy radiant glow. And if you struggle with dryness at all, the dryness can be related to a lack of fat in your diet. So if your skin is dry, try incorporating more good whole plant-based fat sources in your diet, and I'm sure that you'll see a definite boost in the overall hydration of your skin. The reason that I'm using avocado whole, we're gonna mush it up and mix it around. The reason that I'm using this whole rather than olive oil or an oil source is because there's plenty of oils here. And as long as we really work it into the leaves, it's gonna be completely saturated and it'll be like dressing, but you won't have to buy dressing and you won't be using this 
super, super concentrated version of oil, even though oils, olive oil, is healthy for us, when you extract tons and tons and tons of oil from tons and tons and tons of oil, um, olives, and you take it out of their natural state, it's still not as healthful and readily digestible by the body as if it is in its true form. So we're going to use it in its true form. Uh, then we're going to use lemons. I either do one to two lemons depending on how big the salad is. These ones are tiny, so I'm going to use two lemons. I use the juice of these lemons. The reason that we're using lemon is lemon is incredibly alkalizing to the body. And in an alkaline environment in the body, is so much more health-related and health-boosting than an acidic environment. Excessive stress, caffeine, sugars, alcohol, high protein diets, these are things that create acids in the body. And as an acidic body can actually be more susceptible to picking up bugs, to forming diseases, and there's a lot of research being shown nowadays that if you have an alkaline body versus an acidic body, you're going to feel a lot better and you're going to be a lot better healthy state. So lemons are an incredible source of um, balancing out alkalinity in the body. Even though they seem acidic, once we ingest them, they become alkaline. And they're a great source of vitamin C too. And the tang just really balances out all of the flavors. Now the next two options are optional. Um, I am going to include a bunch of flat parsley. Um, the reason I'm going to include parsley is because I know the benefits of parsley are so incredible, and I try to incorporate it as often as I can. It's not just that cute little garnish that's sitting on your plate at a restaurant. It actually has amazing health benefits. It also has a tremendous amount of minerals and nutrients like the kale does, but it's great for actually helping the body to detoxify. Parsley is amazing for that. The reason I'm doing flat parsley rather than cilantro um, or curly parsley is I feel like the flavor of flat parsley is a little more neutral and it's not so overpowering and overwhelming. And there's actually a gene, a gene that I have, that in some people makes cilantro taste like soap. So I avoid cilantro, I'm not a fan. Um, it looks very similar, so make sure that you see that you're actually getting flat parsley because often I will accidentally grab the cilantro, realize it, and not want to use it. And then I feel like the crunchy, like the real tightly um, crumpled up parsley, um, the curly parsley at the grocery store, I feel like the flavor of that's too strong and overpowering, and the texture just kind of throws it off a little bit. So I like to incorporate parsley into my salads. Um, I also like to incorporate that into my green smoothies too. Um, the benefits of parsley are really, really great for us. And then back to my dad's old way of making salads. He would take a green, he would take green onions, and he would take a whole head of garlic, a whole head, not just a piece, the whole thing. And he would chop it up and he would mix it in. The whole house would smell like garlic, he would smell like garlic, we would smell like garlic, but what we found is anytime anyone was coming down with a bug, we would eat the garlic salad. And garlic has a tremendous amount of antifungal and antiviral and antibacterial properties. It's amazing for our health, and I don't think a lot of people realize just how powerful it can be. Some people will sprinkle garlic powder on their meals, but cooking with and eating and consuming raw garlic um, is really very boosting to our overall health and well-being, which is also boosting to our overall beauty. So. For today's recipe, I'm not going to use all of this garlic. I'm feeling fine. My immunity is up. And I'm not in the mood to have my house smell like garlic um, today. But probably next week's batch will have this whole entire head of garlic chopped up in it. Um, but this is an interesting option for you to use as well. Then last but not least would be my finishing seasonings. I absolutely feel that salt is essential. I feel like too many people restrict sodium for fear of bloat, for fear of imbalance in their body, and they've seen in the media that all we have is watch our sodium. And while we need to watch it, avoiding it completely actually throws the balance of our body out of whack. Our cardiovascular system relies heavily upon, us, upon sodium in our bodies, and if it gets too diluted or we don't have enough, we can have an electrolyte imbalance that can create a whole host of health concerns. So I feel like including a little bit of salt, not necessarily in with cooking, um, but maybe just a little pinch at the end helps to bring out the flavor.
flavors and ensure that we are in fact getting sodium in our diets, but just not too much. And my favorite salt, let me grab it. My favorite salt is sea salt. Um, you've probably seen me talk about this before. I love sea salt, S-E-E -E, salt. My dear friend Jessica and her mother, they started making adorable and fabulous cooking videos. They were pretty spectacular, you should check them out. And then, um, about a year or two ago, they came out with sea salt, a finishing salt that you can sprinkle on your food. And I tell you, it tastes better than any salt I've ever had. I was, I've was i never been into iodized salt. You can Google that and see that actually does not help our bodies, but that true salts like Himalayan pink salt and the coarse kind of sea salt are really helpful for us. I was on a big Himalayan pink salt for a very long time, um, big kick on that, but then sea salt came along and that's all I use. It's hand harvested in France, I mean it's pretty like fancy, but it's not that pricey and it tastes really good. So once this is all done, I sprinkle a little sea salt on it and it really makes the flavors pop. It really makes it taste fantastic. So I'm going to go ahead and prep these foods and then I'll come back and I'll show you what we end up with. Okay, so what I'm gonna be using is this little spinner salad thing. It's not exactly a salad spinner, it's a KitchenAid, I love it. You can use a regular colander and a metal bowl. That's what I often use. I like to use something like this because the inside, the little colander inside, you can spin it, it's kind of fun, it's a kind of long workout, and um, you can get all of the water out of the leaves once you've rinsed them thoroughly. And all the water comes outside into the bowl, then you can pour that out and then take the strainer out and then put everything so I feel like just when I'm in a hurry and I'm gonna wash it and chop it and make it, I don't have time for them to dry out on you know towels on the counter. I like to do this because it gets all the moisture right on out of it. Okay, so before I rinse, what I like to do is I like to pull the leaves off of the stems. I try to do it in bite-sized pieces rather than one big long strip like that because then I have less work to do chopping to make it more edible. And then the stems, you can pitch them, but what I like to do is I'll save these and then I'll chop them up or break them up and I'll put them in soups and stews. They end up making a really good um, flavor to like vegetable broth by making veggie broth. So I'll save these and then maybe towards the end of the week I'll make a big old pot of veggie broth with any leftover veggies that might be going bad in my in my fridge and I'll boil these in there and um, the extra added nutrients from the stem is really healthy. Um, but for now we'll just set them aside. And so like I said, I'm just pulling off the leaves, trying to make them bite sized They actually are going to shrink a little bit um, after we get to massaging them. Yes, we're going to massage our kale leaves. Um, the reason that we're going to do that is to really work all of the other ingredients into them. But by working the leaves, you're actually breaking down the cell walls a bit without cooking the greens. Um, and by breaking down those cell walls, you're able to then extract more nutrients from them when you eat them. Um, and that way you'll get a lot more of the chlorophyll, which is just incredible life-giving nutrients, um, all sorts of minerals that our body truly does need to build healthy cells and in turn have gorgeous glowing skin. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna work these leaves once they've been rinsed and once we've added a few more of the ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that now. Okay, so now that we've rinsed off our kale really thoroughly, I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in the spinning bowl. Um, if I wasn't using this, I would just put it in a colander, keep rinsing, and then I'd smush all the water out as best as I can. I would um, put some towels or paper towels down on the counter, lay them out, put another towel over, press, get all that moisture out. Um, but today we're going to use my little spinner. And you can, you can spin it as little or as much as you like. Um, I don't like my leaves very wet. I like them to really adhere to the other ingredients, so I'm going to spin quite a bit. Okay, 
Okay, I think that's probably good. Um, now what I'll do is we'll take this out. We're gonna pour out all the moisture from the leaves. And we're gonna dump the leaves back into the bowl. And then we're gonna work out of the bowl. Um, I've already pre-washed the onions. Um, and I chopped off the little um, funky tips. I'm only going to use three today so it's not so overpowering. I do have to go see clients today and when you're an esthetician and you're this close to someone's face you don't necessarily want like crazy dragon onion breath. So I've already chopped the tips off. These ends are always kind of crinkly, a little gross, so I usually just snap those right off. Um, I'll actually, and I am not a chef by any means, so I don't know, I'm probably not doing it the right way. Um, I'm probably doing it incredibly inappropriately, but this is how I do it. I actually just make a little slice down the onion. I do wash for my fingers, I'm being careful, and then I bunch them up. Um, and the reason I make that little slit is so the pieces are a little bit smaller, um, but they're easier to chop when they're all intact rather than when they're already been sliced itty bitty little pieces. And I actually use the whole entire piece. I do the white part and I do the green part and I come all the way up to the top. All right, so there's one little funky spot. I'm gonna throw that out. And then I put those green onions in there, okay? My hands were clean too, by the way. Um, right now I'm gonna be working with the avocados, so I should have not actually worn my wedding ring. Um, we're gonna see if this is viable. You know avocados, you can buy them at noon and by 1 p.m. they're kind of a mess. This one looks pretty good. So what I do is I just chop it open and I smush it out. I just smush all the insides out, just like that. Take out the seed. You're going to get goopy, so don't let that, don't worry, like we're gonna, our hands are gonna get goopy. We can wash them. Um, but don't try and be neat about this because your hands are gonna be a little messy. Um, I, at the time of this filming, it's winter, and I had just gotten back from a trip where I took three flights to get there and two flights to get home. That's a lot of travel to a very, very, very cold climate. And while I'm in Arizona right now and it's not that cold, um, we still have heaters on quite a bit of places that we go. And so the airplane travel and the, the, that fake hot air has been really dehydrating to my skin. So because of that, I'm incorporating two avocados rather than just one because I really want those added essential fatty acids. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna get in here and we're gonna start smooshing up the kale and the avocado. You know what, I actually forgot to put the lemon in. I'm gonna put lemon in now. Um, because I want the acids from the lemon to... Maybe I should wait till I'm done washing my hands. I want the acids from the lemon to actually work on breaking down and softening the kale leaves too. And I've never made a cooking video before, so I suppose, you know, I'm learning as I go. When I do my lemons, I actually prefer to have ones that like fit in my hand rather than those big huge massive lemons unless they're natural and they came from you know, your tree but I find that the big huge massive lemons they don't have as much juice they don't taste as good and they're probably amped up with some something to make them extra big so I really rather the small hand size um, lemons and so I kind of squish them around and I roll them on the kitchen counter and the reason that I do this is to really get the juices um, loosened up. So I roll it around and make it really squishy and pliable. Then I chop it open and I try not to waste too much of the juice. I'll end up pouring my um, extra over into the bowl. But then I use a little lemon squeezer and for the longest time I was using lemon squeezers, but I guess the wrong way, I was putting the lemon in the little bowl the way it was shaped and squeezing. But what I recently learned is that you get more juice out of it if you put it in upside down, flat side of the lemon into the bowl. And then you squeeze, it ends up getting a lot more of the juice out. And then I pour it to the side. Um, it sifts out the seeds, it gets all the juice, so you really get a lot more out of it. And they're pretty easy. Um, you just have to make sure that it doesn't scorch it 
that, you know, somebody if they're over there scorching the eye. So I, I like to squeeze pretty low and then tilt away from me. Um, but we're going to do one more lemon. And I will be mindful if I have any nicks or scrapes on my hand or a hangnail because we're going to be working this into the salad. If you have any openings on your hand, which is kind of, you know, gross if you're cooking, um, wear gloves. That way it doesn't like, burn and sting really bad. My hands are a-okay today, so I'm just going to use my bare hands. Okay, so we've got the avocado, we've got the lemon in there. Now we're going to come in and we're just going to massage. And we're going to do this for a little while. Um, I really want to get all of the ingredients mixed up really well. And I want the kale leaves to be soft. I don't want them to be sit stiff. Um, a lot of people hate kale because they say the texture. It's just too, like, it's too chewy or it's too stiff or it's hard or it's weird. And they just, they don't know what to do with it. And if they cook it, it feels too rubbery. Um, if they saute it, and honestly, I feel like when you when you saute food or you boil it or you cook, um, cook it at high temperatures, you actually get a lot of the nutrients to cook out of it, and you're not you're not able to consume them, and that's what we want. So, I like to eat a lot of my veggies raw. I also like to blend a lot of my veggies into smoothies because I know that's a great way to get it directly into the digestive system, and we're not cooking away or losing. Um, any nutrients. Um, but when I do cook kale, I actually um, like to bake it. I like to make kale chips, and that'll be another video that we do too. Okay, so now it is really soft, really squishy. You could keep going, but it's highly mixed. So I'm going to rinse now. Get it out from underneath my nails. And then this would be the part where I would take some of the parsley. I'll probably put the whole bunch in, but um, for now I'll just show you um, just a little bit. So I'll take the parsley, I already cleaned it, and then I'll just mix it in. Probably should have done that with a spoon or before I wash my hands. Um, and then now as for my favorite part, the sea salt. Um, like I said, a little goes a long way. You know your palate and you know what's good for you. You also know your body and if you have any blood pressure issues, talk to your doctor if you're supposed to be having salt or not. Um, mine is fine. I actually get low in sodium, which has created some electrolyte imbalances that have given me like irregular heartbeat and sometimes I've gone to where I drank so much water trying to rehydrate myself that I'll have like oh gosh, four liters or a gallon a day, and doing that for too long has depleted my sodium. And I've needed to include more sodium, otherwise I felt a little lightheaded. So the, these basic nutrients, they're not just flavor enhancers, and they're not just like food boosters. They're actually like, when we consume things that our body needs, they can be medicine to us. They can actually help to help um, health concerns that we have. Um, so I, that's one of the reasons that I'd like to have a little bit of sea salt every day, is just to keep my electrolyte balance in check. So also not very chef-like, I'm just going to use a regular old spoon to mix this up. Um, now that we've got all of the flavors going together. Um, my husband, the lovely Joe, he hates vegetables. Hates vegetables. Um, we actually make him a veggie smoothie every night and he just chugs it and gets most of his veggies that way because he knows he needs them, he just doesn't like taking the time to eat them. Um, and that's what works for him. But when I make this salad, even though he hates vegetables, he actually, like, he doesn't complain. He's like, oh, yay, you make kale salad. That's pretty good. I, you know, he likes it. So knowing somebody who's so incredibly averse to eating veggies will eat this and like it and want to finish off, like, the whole bowl when I have it in the fridge to last a few days, um, I can say that I feel like most veggie haters are going to be down with this. Um, he likes spicy foods though. So at this point what I do is I break the salad into two unless I want to join him 
um, in the spiciness of the salad. I'll break it into two and I'll have my bowl and then his bowl, um, I'll sprinkle some cayenne pepper. He likes that just a little bit, but if it sits for a few days, it really, really, really heats up. So typically cayenne is best to put on right before you eat it, otherwise it gets pretty fiery if it sits in the fridge for a few days. So I'm going to dish some of this up. It's going to be a lovely side dish to my lunch. Um, I have had a really nice time sharing it with you. Um, it reminds me very much of my childhood. And while we didn't always use kale, sometimes we used spinach, and often we use a lot, a lot of garlic, um, it reminds me of my dad, and it reminds me of my childhood. And it's a really, really, really healthy way to infuse your body with some amazing nutrients that not only are going to help you feel better, they're going to help you look better, but most importantly, they're going to help your body operate a lot more efficiently. And when our bodies are working like they should because we're feeding and nourishing it in the most helpful way, we feel great. And when we feel great, you wake up there and we shine bright and we're just really happy living this life. So I hope that for you. Enjoy your kale salad. I would love to know if you try it. If you do, please come back and share with me in the comments below. Let me know which version you try. Let me know if you think of any other additives that you can put in to make it your own and, and how that goes. And if you want more tips on how to eat healthfully to have healthy, beautiful skin and more reminders that you matter and that you are important and that taking care of yourself really, truly is a special thing, Head on over to my website and sign up for updates where I will let you know when I release new videos, new books, new products, and educational tools where you can learn all of that and more. Share this with your friends if you found it helpful, and I hope to see you back here soon.